If you work for the government, you haven't chosen a new health care plan yet or looked at the options, your time is almost up. Open season ends Monday, December 14th. It is not time to panic yet, but it is time to start doing some research. Walton Francis is a consultant, health insurance expert. He's author of the Checkbook Guide to Health Plans. What is the absolute last minute, Walt? Is it when on December 14th do people need to get their information in? <laughs> By midnight. Uh, but, you know, if you wait to anywhere close to that, you've made a terrible mistake because you don't want to be rushed. You can actually make a, a really good plan decision with maybe half an hour or an hour of work maximum. And it's not all even boring. I'm not we're not talking about reading all the small print details of a plans brochure. It's just checking out, looking at the landscape for possible options. Um, most people don't even know that high deductible plans exist or what they do. Well, why don't you just go to one of them, read read at the plan website or in the brochure the highlights of what does this plan do and how does it do it. Check, just tiptoe through the tulips a little bit to check out a few alternative plans. And of course, most importantly, be sure the plan you're in still remains at least a moderately good choice by seeing how the plan is changing for next year, by making sure the premium isn't taking a big jump. Some are. The average increase next year is only about 5% in enrollee share premium, but there's some that are going up zero, a few that are going down, and a few that are going up 10 or 15%. Uh, so do just a little checking around. You, you both teed me up for my next question and gave me a tiny Tim reference in the same statement. It's pretty incredible, Walt. Um, <laughs> what is a high deductible plan and how are they different from the plans that people are used to? It's a plan where the plan will not cover any of your regular medical expenses except your annual physical, which it, which is always free, uh, until you've paid as much as $2,000 in expenses out of pocket. But the plans all these plans all provide a health savings account, which is typically something like $1,000, and you can use that account, or you can, if you have little or no expense, just save it and roll it over to next year, it's your money. It's like an IRA on steroids. The money goes in tax-free, paid paid a new contribution every year from the plan's premium, so you don't have to put up anything. It go, grows every year tax-free, and when you use it for health care, it comes out tax-free. So it's just a great deal if you don't have high expenses concur you know, every year. Uh, some diabetics have huge drug expenses every year, probably not a good choice for you. But for anyone young and healthy or anyone old, older who's in at least reasonably good health, uh, by all means, check them out. So when you talk about the health savings account, it uh, takes me to the flexible spending account, which you told me last time we talked, only about 25% of federal employees sign up for one. What are they missing out on, Walt? <laughs> well, they're missing out on a chance to get about a 25% savings on whatever they spend out of pocket for health care. Now, the flexible spending account is a separate decision. It's unrelated to the plan choice you make. You have to make it every year. If you don't set one up during open season, you're out of luck for the next year. Uh, you can set aside up to uh, $2,500 or more in money that otherwise would be in your paycheck, but it, the money is now untaxed. And if you know that next year, for example, you're going to see an out-of-plan out of plan network doctor uh, five or ten times and pay 50 bucks each time, or you have a lot of out-of-pocket expenses uh, at the pharmacy, you know, if you anything you can predict, if you set up at a flexible spending account an amount corresponding to that, uh, you can save roughly, depending on your exact tax bracket, but including payroll taxes, which are a big chunk, you can save roughly 25% or 30% of what you spend out of pocket. And at least some of those plans have made it so easy for people to use their accounts. They're issuing debit cards that you that deduct your money automatically from your savings accounts, right? I mean, the, these companies have really tried to make this as easy as possible for people. Absolutely. And that's that applies to flexible spending accounts as well as to high deductible HSA accounts and to consumer-driven HRA accounts. There's a lot of different kinds of accounts floating around out there. But once you're in one, they sound a little daunting. Turn out turns out to be really quite easy to use them. We've talked about the flexible spending accounts. We talked about health insurance. We always do. We don't always give uh, enough attention, I think, to the dental plans 
and uh, to uh, the, the vision plans. What should people think about as they're examining potentially doing something with their FedVIP accounts? Okay, number one, uh, of course, if you expect any expensive tooth problems next year, and maybe don't even expect, uh, a dental plan can be a very good deal to make, to establish some boundaries about uh, around what you might be expected to spend. Typically, they pay all of your routine expenses, your annual checkup, you know, or semi-annual, whatever, uh, for, for you and your family members. Um, they give you a big discount on the less expensive stuff, like fillings. Uh, but you will probably pay half or two thirds of the really expensive things, but still like crowns and bridges. And, but still that's a big saving if you're only paying half. Um, there are new de dental plans this year. There's a slew of them. So <laughs> we're, we're near that point of more overwhelming choices. And there's a little known fact that most of the health plans also provide some dental benefits either as part of the plan or as an unofficial benefit hidden on a page in their brochure that says uh, other plan benefits. Uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why you should search a brochure using a term like dental, okay, or maternity for something you expect to have uh, expenses in next year. But the, the open season runs concurrently with the um, uh, health plan open season. It's a different website, a FedVIP website you pay the entire premium, there's no government subsidy. Um, you can use the FedVIP tool for looking at the official FedVIP plans, okay? Or you can use the checkbook tool to look at official and unofficial dental benefits. Um, the vision plans are uh, a, quite a different kettle of fish. There's also a number of them. They basically pay for one pair of glasses a year or one contact lenses pair a year. Uh, and and there, there's not a whole lot of frills, but you do get big discounts. So for so for many people, it's a convenient way to to go to the eye, eyewear store that you otherwise would go to and and get a, a big uh, cut in in what it costs. But well, there's we no are, big savings here. Well, a lot more I'd love to cover, but we're out of time. Thanks very much for joining me. It's great to have you. Thank you.